Hello and welcome to Talk to Your Health. I'm your host, Dr. Derek De Silva. Once upon a time, back surgery required that the entire spine be exposed. Thanks to medical technology, many back surgeries these days are not nearly as invasive. Case in point is high school student Amanda Moraz of Long Valley who underwent a life-changing surgery for a rare back ailment. Also with us is the man who performed that surgery, Dr. Richard Call, a spine surgeon with New Jersey Spine and Rehabilitation in Palmton Lakes. Thank you very much to both of you for being here. Amanda, so you lived a pretty active lifestyle from what I understand before this whole thing happened. Tell me a little bit about what you were doing before and where you are now. Um, well, I played softball and soccer and volleyball and then after my surgery, I wasn't able to play sports, so I should be able to play sports next March. And we're going to get into a little bit more of exactly where you are right now. But, uh, but Dr. Cole, what is it that she had? And, and tell us what, what happened here. Uh, Amanda had um, a problem called spondylolisthesis, which uh, in lay terms is a slippage of the intervertebral bodies. And uh, she had uh, been involved in uh, contact sports. She'd been involved in gymnastics, in football, and this had led to a, a, a fracture of two bones at the back of her column and a slippage. Now, can, can you just describe that a little bit more? Because we have vertebrae that are pretty much on top of each other with a disc in the middle, right? Yes. What, what exactly happened between those two vertebrae? Well, what happened was uh, there uh, are two uh, uh, bony elements at the back of the uh, column which we refer to as the pars interarticularis. And with repetitive uh, strain or sprain exercises in sports such as uh, uh, gymnastics, such as baseball, uh, small fractures can develop in these bones. And over a period of time, uh, if you have bilateral or fractures on both sides, one body will begin to slip over the top of the other. And it produces what kind of symptoms? Well, uh, some of the initial symptoms that the patients uh, will complain of will be back pain that just is persistent, it's there day and night, uh, it gets worse with activity. And as the condition progresses, uh, patients will often begin to complain of leg pain, some numbness and tingling, and as it gets uh, even worse, some weakness in the lower extremities. So uh, for all of this, what is the solution? Well, um, the initial treatment uh, protocol for patients who are diagnosed as having a spondylolisthetic defect is conservative care. So that would be a restriction of activity, uh, minimization of uh, engagement in uh, the sporting activities that led it, and uh, some rehabilitation. How did you feel about having this whole procedure done? I mean, you were how old at the time? I was 15. You were 15. So what were your thoughts about this? You know, here I am, 15 years of age, I'm very active, I'm going to go through a spine surgery. How did you feel about that? I was scared. I was afraid that I could be paralyzed or not be able to play sports ever again. And we have some video uh, of, of what is going on here, so we're going to bring that up right now. And if you could just tell us right here, what, what are you yeah, doing, what's uh, going on? Uh, well, this is uh, the uh, operating room, and that's um, an x-ray, it's a lateral view of Amanda's spine. Uh, that's the small incision uh, through which we're uh, removing the problematic disc, or the disc that's given out, uh, and taking out uh, some of the bone. Uh, this a little bit of hammering there? What's happening there? Well, we're using a percutaneous, minimally invasive system to access the pedicles, and this is a part of the spinal column uh, into which we put pedicle screws, which stabilizes the slip. And you're looking at video as you're looking at a camera so you know exactly where you're going, is that right? Yes, that's correct. We, uh, we use a fluoroscopic guidance and video endoscopic guidance, and this allows us to place instruments into the spinal column in a minimally invasive fashion. So we use a, a, a much smaller incision than with a traditional uh, open back procedure. Wow. Uh, and we're able to, to correct the abnormality, but to do it on a same day basis. And the oh, this is the, I mean, that's amazing that you can really get to the point. That's the beauty of this, this whole thing. Yes, 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 it is. It, and it's uh, uh, patients able to return to their normal social and work functions mm -hmm. in a much shorter space of time. So uh, your recovery, what was that like? And where are you right now? Tell me, tell me how you're doing, what's going on? Well, I was able to walk out of the surgery. And within two weeks, I was walking like down my street, 
and now I'm able to swim and ride my bike and go on the trampoline. So what, where's, where is she going to go as far as, you know, she, she's young now, in her uh, later teenage years, in her 20s, is she going to get back to normal uh, function? Yes, absolutely. I mean, Amanda's doing very well. Uh, the back is healing uh, uh, perfectly. And she's going to be back to her normal level of activity within six to nine months uh, from the date of the surgery, which we carried out in March. Very good. And uh, what would you tell other kids that are maybe thinking about this procedure that have back pain just very quickly, your recommendation to them? I would definitely say to go to Dr. Call and get the surgery done instead of wasting two years of my life trying to figure out what was wrong with me. If I just went to Dr. Call, I would have been able to play sports already. Very good. Well, good luck to you as you continue to recover. Thank you. And Dr. Call, keep up the great work. Okay, thank you very thank much. You very thank much you very much for joining us. When we come back, how to help your kids stay healthy as they head back to school. And later, five foods with amazing superpowers to keep you at your healthiest. But first, your health bite of the week. There may not all sound very manly, but here are some heart healthy foods men should consider. Welcome back to 12 to Your Health. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva. Kids don't want to hear it, but it's almost time to head back to school. While that's welcome news for parents, the news they don't want to hear is that their child has caught something from one of their classmates. Here with some advice on how to make that transition back to school a healthy one is Dr. Julie Chen, an integrative medicine specialist who specializes in holistic medicine to help improve overall health, prevent and treat disease, and maximize longevity. Dr. Chen, welcome to the program. Thank you for Great having me. Great to have you here. Colds and flus seem to be the most obvious thing as kids head back to school, but what else do parents really need to be worried about besides that? Well, a lot of their daily activities can affect their immune system. Uh, a lot of their safety issues, their sleep cycles, their um, exercise levels, all of those affect their general overall health as well as their immune system. So if you're worried about parents or worried about the kids getting sick, you want to make sure that they get back into a regular sleep cycle, aside from the ones where it's more irregular mm -hmm. during the summertime. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that they're getting a mild to moderate level of intensity of exercise to make sure that they're boosting their immune mm -hmm. system. Okay. And of course, safety when they're right. out with with their right. friends wearing their seatbelts. But let me, let me just well. show you that right now. Just to ask you this what can kids do and what can parents do right now mm -hmm. to, 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 you know, to, to keep their immune system healthy? Sleep is obviously one of the most important right. things, right? Right. Sleep is important. What else? So definitely, again, that exercise, because we've seen in clinical studies that excessive exercise can suppress the immune system, but mild to moderate exercise helps the, to boost the immune system. And also things like eating a plant-based diet, because you're creating that fundamental building blocks of the minerals and vitamins and phytonutrients to have a healthy immune system. And stress, of course, is something that is going to be right, suppressing right, the immune right. system. And so, of course, you can't seem to get away from that during the school year, but to actually incorporate some relaxation times and downtimes for the kids so right. that they they can, uh, their immune system. And, and, I, and there's one thing that you mentioned that I think is very important is the whole idea of the whole exercise issue. Right. You know, that leads to a healthy sleep cycle, mm -hmm. that leads to better, I, th I think, better eating habits, a little right. bit more hydration and things like that. But once they're back in school, mm -hmm. uh, something comes up and there's always things around, the kids, a lot of kids are sick. What can they do at that time once they're back in school to stay healthy? So it's really important for them to make sure that they're washing their hands because a lot of times they're going around to communal areas touching germs mm -hmm. and a lot of times we then touch our face and our nose and mucosa and that's where a lot of the germs come from so make sure they're washing their hands but if they're able to let's say they're working right. out in the gym wipe down the communal areas right, to sanitize right, right, right. and also really to kind of focus on the fact that uh, a lot of the foods that we eat mm -hmm. also suppress our immune system so a lot of sugary foods processed foods have been seen to suppress the immune functioning so I Again, I agree with you, when you exercise, you tend to eat better, and when you're eating better, you're eating less of right. those sugary foods. So, so the whole thing about washing your hands, mm -hmm. doing the things you're supposed to do, you know, I think kids need to be said, told that when you go to the bathroom, you really need to wash your hands. Yes. And I think that that whole behavior mm -hmm. really needs to be reinforced with them. And the anti-cold routines, you know, what, what are some of those things, again, besides washing your hands? So definitely, you know, when if you already yourself have a cold, make sure you're not coughing into your hand, you're coughing into your elbow so that you're not spreading it everywhere. Make sure that you're getting the rest, 
decreasing this, the um, stress in your life, getting the moderate intensity exercise, avoiding the things that you know are going to suppress your immune system, the foods, the activities, et cetera, mm -hmm. those are important. You know, the, the one thing mm -hmm. that I really tell parents is, and, and there's a lot of data that has now come out on this about the antibacterial hand washers and things like that. Right. My opinion, and you can give me yours, sure. is soap and water. Plain old soap and water is just as good. What are your thoughts on I that? I agree. I think a lot of times it's just, and also making sure that you're washing your hand long enough. This whole kind of rub a little bit and then rinse a little mm -hmm. bit, that, that's not going to get as much effect as you want to. So the soap and water and you're really rinsing for several minutes to get all the bacteria off and then using paper towels to wipe off the bacteria, right. that's important. And also, again, opening the bathroom door or using the paper towel to open Do it all the time. Right? Do it all the time. So if you catch a cold or flu, the kids get sick, um, what else can they do? I know one of the things that I always tell them is that there are certain cold fighting supplements. What do you like as far as that goes? So I love using black elderberry, andrographis, astragalus. There's some anti-inflammatory aspects to some of these herbs and they have uh, antiviral uh, activity as well, which is helpful. Um, but some of the things like a lot of my patients don't know is vitamin C at higher levels, two to three grams, mm -hmm. have some antihistamine right. effects right. without all that drowsiness. So right. I really like to recommend that. And then that. sleep obviously is important. Yes for the immune system, Absolutely, right? absolutely. And you want to make sure that you're getting, going to bed around the same time, waking up around the same time. Our bodies like rhythm, chronobiology. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's important. And so even if you're getting six hours, but they're, they're at random times, it's not as good as if you got it at regular times. And then re obviously relaxation and making sure that that, that whole piece of diminishing stress and helping support the health of the immune system. Right, they actually did a study on students where they looked at when they're going through finals time, their immune system is suppressed. So stress is a huge impact on our, our immune functioning. So decreasing that is important. Thank you so much for being here. Thank it's you so much. It's a pleasure to finally meet you after all the <laughs> interviews we've done on radio. So it's Thank great to see you. Thank you for having it. me. My pleasure. Still to come, some foods with amazing powers you should consider adding to your diet. But first, here's a look at this week's Community Health Calendar. Welcome back. In a summer full of films about superheroes, we thought we'd take a look at some superfoods, which also have superpowers. But these you can find at your local grocery store. Here with a look at five of these superfoods and their benefits is registered dietitian Marlo Mittner. Great to have you with us. Thank Hi. you very much for joining us. Thank you. So a dietitian, you know, we've had dietitians talk about all kinds of things on this program. We've never had anybody talk about superfoods. So what makes a food a superfood? Well, a superfood is really a food that is low in calories and full of nutrition. So that by eating it, just one serving is going to give us most of what we need as the recommended values of the day. And usually these foods are all really high in antioxidants, which is really the key. So it's a food, and, and, and I, I'm glad you put it that way, but it's a food that is very nutrient dense. This is right, it has a lot of stuff in it. Is that a lot of stuff and stuff that we need and really by having even a small amount can really give us what we need in terms of our recommended dietary allowances. All right, let's get right to it here. So let's start off with pomegranate juice, but I'd also like to talk a little bit about pomegranates themselves. Pomegranates, pomegranate juice, pomegranate seems to be the trendy flavor that's added to a lot of things. The benefit of pomegranates are the fact that they have three times as much antioxidants than green tea, wine, than any other food available. And so really we're going to have lots of values by having it in the juice, but in the juice you want to make sure it's pure. We want to mm -hmm. make sure the juices are not added with sugar and, you know, 1%. Pure pomegranate juice or the pomegranate itself is loaded with antioxidants. And, and when, uh, the other thing that I really would like for you to talk about just very briefly is when we look at a label, when we look okay. at that label and we look at how much sugar in there and how many servings per container, could you just go over that very briefly at what people really need to look for on those labels with regard to sugar and servings? Sure. When you're looking at a label, you first want to look at what the serving size is because it could be a small bottle, but it could have two or three servings. So you want to get an idea of what they're considering a serving. And when you're looking at that for something like a juice, you're looking for something that in four ounces isn't going to give you more than about 60 calories, which is going to tell us is only about 25 grams of sugar. And then 
even then, I would definitely add some water to dilute it so that it'll be have a less of a strong effect on your blood sugars, and we also know that it'll hydrate you more than dehydrating you with the high sugar content. What I tell my patients to do here a lot of times is always whenever they're doing the juices, is to dilute them, as you just said. A absolutely. You're, you There's, don't have a problem with that at all? Not at all, but okay. again, really to me, really important, you wanna make sure it doesn't say any added sugar, right. or that it's an artificial flavoring, really important. Coffee, these beans, I mean, the, 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 the smell in here <laughs> is unbelievable. Talk to me about coffee, and coffee beans specifically. Right. Well, coffee beans have now been added in lots of different foods. People are eating coffee beans as a snack. There are chocolate covering them with dark chocolate. They're trying to have them be more popular in the market. The benefits of coffee is really interesting. What mm -hmm. they're showing is, aside from the caffeine that's in the bean, which actually stimulates our heart rate a little bit, gets us to be less hungry, which is helping the obesity epidemic, more importantly, in the coffee bean, there's chromium and magnesium. Magnesium, mm. which actually has benefits in helping us with our insulin uptake, so it prevents diabetes. And also, in addition, again, rich in antioxidants, but it also has been shown it has an effect on your brain, the cells in the brain, so it seems to be helping in the prevention Excellent. and the prognosis of Alzheimer's, dementias, Parkinson's disease. Really, really very beneficial Great in stuff. terms of the bean. Again, don't overdo sure. it. Absolutely. Let's go to tomatoes. We're, we're got to right, good. Sure. Tomatoes? We Toma love tomatoes. Tomatoes, healthy. You were in New Jersey. We have to like tomatoes. Tomatoes are available all year round, healthy, whether it's canned, whether it's crushed, whether it's diced, high in lycopene. Preventative of different cancers also has an effect on your appetite hormone, ghrelin, which allows us to be less hungry when we eat it again, mm -hmm. keeping you more satisfied, eating healthy things full of vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C, lots of different things. And then vitamins. the obvious prostate stuff with the Absolutely, lycopene. Absolutely, but not even, just prices, not even just prostate cancer with lycopene. Now it's going to breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer. So really tomatoes, super, super, super food. Excellent. And what is this right here? This, this Right here, it's hoodia. Hoodia is um, an ingredient that's going to be used in lots of different foods coming up. It's a very trendy element. It's a plant. In this form, it's in the ice cube diet. It's a plant. They chop it up. They add lemon, lime, or pomegranate, again, mm -hmm. using the antioxidants. Mm -hmm. And what hoodia does, it has an element called P57, sends a stimulation to your brain telling you that you're already satisfied, that you don't need to eat as much, stimulates your metabolism, gives you a burst of energy, all healthy, all natural. We don't want to use hoodia with other stimulants. In its natural form, helps to control our appetite and allows our body to burn through the bad stuff. And last but not least, and those look hot. Hot. Jalapeno peppers. Love them. Yum. Um, really good. Tasty on your taste buds, so it gets you to eat less. But more important than that, it has effects on, by heating up your body by its thermogenic abilities, it actually causes you to secrete more mucus, so it helps with congestion. It helps with any diseases that need you to be lubricated in your joints, arthritis, Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Also, the thermogenic abilities keep your body warm. Definitely helps block the brain pain transmitters, curing headaches. And in the winter, a little cayenne pepper in your socks, in Yummy. your shoes, keeps your feet warm. There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for being here. Folks, if you have any questions about anything you've seen on the show today, email them to us at 12 to Health at news12.com. Thanks for watching 12 to Health, and until next time, I'm Dr. Derek DeSilva, and may you always be blessed with good health.